Last video, I finished the Ogre Boss, and now I'm painting something else from Atlantis Miniatures, one of the goblins from the Goblin Packs. I'm hoping to end up with a really nice, vibrant green skin. I want to tone everything else down in terms of the leathers and things like that that they're wearing, and then find somewhere else to have another accent colour, just so each of these goblins stands out in their own way. I'm going to start with this one, as he is my favourite. Uh, I can imagine playing him as a, like a goblin rogue in a DD and d game. So the first thing I do is slather some Caliban green from Citadel all over him. He's in a really cool dynamic pose where he's running and leaning really far forward. I want to make sure I consider that when I think about where the highlights and the shadows are going to be. These guys are mostly skin, so there's not a lot else to paint. I'm actually going to paint the base tone of those now, just so I can see the miniature and how it will come together as a whole in terms of the different colours. I put some Idrian Flesh from P3, that's a new paint in my collection, on the straps and clothes. This is my first experience with P3 paint, and it seems really diluted compared to Vallejo and Citadel that I've used previously. I put some Dark Sea Blue from Vallejo Model Color on the daggers, and then lastly some Mephiston Red from Citadel on his hair. That's the bit I want to make stand out, is his unique color. With the base coats done, it's time to start the fun bit, giving everything some volume with highlights. I lay out my selection of colors for the skin on the wet palette, ready to go, and get started. The first highlight is Eosin Green, mm, yeah, uh, from P3, and I am checking under a lamp to see where these highlights fall. Getting this step right I've realized is really important. It might not be until the end that you get to make things pop, but it all builds up from these early foundations. So I'm trying really hard to get the placement of this layer right. I paint up in small areas, one arm and then another arm. I keep checking to see if it looks right, paying special attention to the face. Once I'm happy, I blend this layer into the shadows a little by using a simple glaze, going from the dark areas into this layer. Once that's smoothed in, at least a little bit, it's onto the next layer. I mess up this pot, but I use Goblin Green and some Sun Yellow from Vallejo. I'm adding in some yellow already as I want to go to a pretty bright lime green highlight at the end. This layer is restricted in my head to only go onto areas I just painted with that P3 paint. This means, if you forget the small blend I just did with the glaze, I now have a gradient of three layers or colours. If I went completely over the previous layer of green though, then I'd only have two layers and undo all of the work I just did. Once I'm happy with this layer, another glaze is made and used to blend it in a little. From here, each layer is just going to be adding more yellows to the previous one, doing the same as before, going into smaller and smaller areas to add the gradient of colours. After this layer, I mix another paint with more yellow and add to the brightest spots of light on the skin. I make a glaze with this brightest highlight and blend some of the last few layers together with it. That enhances the yellow tone kind of across the tonal range and just brightens all of the skin up a little. That's the skin done. And it's just what I wanted. It's really nice, vibrant looking colour. So now that I'm pleased with that, let's hope I don't ruin any of the rest of it. From here, I'm going to move on to the hair. It's now I realise that I've started already very bright and red. So I mix in some deep sea blue and go over it again. So now I can highlight from our new mix of darker red, up to orange fire from Vallejo, and then to bright orange from Vallejo. Trying to highlight the edges of the hair leaving a deep red at the top. For the leather, I used the same technique as I showed in my last video with the Ogre Warboss. And so this is the end result. I added some tonal variety with glazes, put some pinks to bring warmth into the face and hands, some blues to cool the deeper shadows down. All of this is personal choice and kind of part of the atmosphere that you want the mini to sit in. I painted up one of his friends, this time with blue hair, so now we have Red Goblin and Blue Goblin. I'm super pleased with how they came out, I really like the skin, and like I say, it is mostly what you see on these little goblins. They should really stand out on a gaming table, I hope you like them, let me know in the comments or ask me anything down there. Until the next video, see ya!